Well, Summer Games Fest has come and gone, and the price point for some of these trailers were absolutely insane. The, uh, I, I, I watched part of the uh, Summer Games Fest. You know, it's a scroll of just trailer after trailer of video games with barely any gameplay to be seen. It's all mostly cinematics and yeah there is some gameplay that does happen but it's few and far between there is a lot of indie games that were showcased at this which is quite interesting because it's being reported that the indie games some of them got there for free uh for their panel or their their part of it but other games were being charged up towards half a million dollars. Now, this depiction of video games was, I, I gotta say, it, it didn't feel like anything extremely special came out of Summer Games Fest. I feel like this is a clip show that could easily be put together and then just launched and just let it go into uh, the YouTube space. Viewing, it's oh, got over 3 million views at this point for a live stream, which is absolutely crazy. The amount of hype that goes around this. But I feel like the Summer Games Fest was a pretty big letdown. I feel like there was not anything really there that you wouldn't see elsewhere. Anyway, before we get fully into this, do me a favor or do yourself a favor and subscribe to the channel today. We're growing ever growing and the more you subscribe the more we can grow now this game here is being put out i guess by choo choo charles uh the original maker that it's a horror game that came out was a a very interesting uh poppy playtime style horror game that came out but this one it looks like you're a koala that needs to escape prison it really plays like a really silly uh vr is what it looks like but this is probably one of the few games that actually kind of shows gameplay, I'm guessing, I'm thinking that's gameplay, but there was a lot of games that didn't just show gameplay, and that was one of the biggest gripes, I would say, overall with it. You go through a lot of the trailers, you get a lot of cinematics, it's neat, there's a lot of hype for these games, but is that worth the cost? Now, the cost, this is from Esquire. These shows are really effing expensive, one insider says, referring to the, both the Summer Games Fest and the Game Awards, according to price details shared by multiple marketing professionals who requested an amenity. Running a trailer during Summer Games Fest main show this year cost $250,000 per minute, or $350,000 for 90 seconds, uh, 450 for two minutes and $550,000 for two and a half minutes. Why in the world does it cost this much? This isn't the Oscars. This isn't no award show. This is just a showcase of games. And I have to say the one good part of it is they did showcase quite a few indie titles and it's being reported that a lot of the indie titles that got to be shown there didn't have to pay these prices they didn't have to pay they just got the spot but this is like running a super bowl like they, they even talk about the super bowl commercials the, it, it, you're paying through the nose to have this showcase and where does this actually get you it gets you on 3.5 million views at this point i mean you, you want a better idea for gameplay trailers? Go to YouTubers and pay them a fraction of this. Pay them a fraction of this to showcase your video game. You, this, this will be ingenious ideas. And I you know what? I'm open for it. If you have a brand new game that you have coming out and you want to get some hype up for it, go to a couple YouTubers, pay them a fraction of this, pay them a thousand dollars even to showcase your trailer out of the blue and say, okay, it's got to launch at this time. Let's do this and have them react to it, have a live reaction to your trailer, or just let them play the trailer on their channel and pay them like a thousand dollars or something and let it go. And it will do so much more than this here right now 3.5 million views right now i guess in one day this will probably cap off at like six six million views but really having 
it, it doesn't make sense to have a show like this anymore. Um, I gotta say there, there was some very, very awkwardness in, in the, uh, show when he's talking and his co-host is talking when they're moving around, it just feel, it didn't feel natural in that sense. And I, you know, I've sat here in front of this camera for years now and this didn't feel that, that good. It felt very awkward to watch the show, to watch them move around and talk. Name Deer and Boy, which comes from first-time developer Jason Huday and Perry. Oh my God, Deer and Boy, uh, Deer and Boy. Could there be a better name for a video game where you're walking through a woods, uh, doing an adventure that kind of has that Ori-ish feel to it? But Deer and Boy, it, it, it's such a basic name. It's, I guess, it's going to be remembered because I'm remembering it now from the trailer. It just didn't feel like it was anything spectacular with it. It has that Ori essence, but I don't think the game had enough of a game to actually do more with it. Chris, who started that project alone in 2020 during the pandemic and now has a team of eight helping him realize his vision with yeah, financial was, aid from the developers of Let's see if I can get some gameplay here. This, you're, it, it, it's a walking simulator uh, from a very strange angle with a deer and a boy i mean all the power to you that, that that's great there was things like killer bean this when i saw this i was like isn't this a meme isn't this just a throwaway game to begin with it, it this kind of looks like i guess the matrix meets a coffee bean <laughs> it's you just kind of sit there and go uh-huh um this one here, I am a little bit interested in, but it's not because of the gameplay. The gameplay didn't look that great. I'm only interested in, in because of what it was. Let's see. I'm trying to remember what the title was. That's 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 how bad. I, I can't even remember the title of. So the game didn't resonate with me very well. But I remember when they, they started this one oh. and they had the Stanley Parable, which is was an amazing game. It, it was a very fun, I can unique stop game. Running. This is good so for me. this being by the same people who did the Stanley feel... Parable, there is more behind that one. But once again, are you paying $500,000 to showcase this trailer? I don't feel like it's there. I don't feel like it's there. They showed Power World here later on. Pay a couple YouTubers, you'll get a lot more bang for your buck out of it than going to this Summer Games Fest. I didn't see the point of this entire in endeavor. Um, this is why you have uh, things like State of Play with uh, PlayStation. You have the Xbox Showcase. You have Nintendo. They, they each do their own showcase now. Um, and there's no point in these festivals anymore, uh, ultimately, because they're just a big letdown in the end, unless you have something amazing that comes out of it. Unless you sit there and has something that really draws you there and says, this is really good, you need to see this, let's do this. The, you know, I have Among Us below us, they showcase Among Us's new TV show that was coming out. Not a single person spoke in the, in the show, and it's a cartoon of Among Us characters running around doing tasks. And I'm like, how, how did this become a TV show? This was, it, it's a great game a great team building game but i i just was taken back this whole summer games fest to me i don't see it um that five hundred thousand dollar price point spend it elsewhere Let, let's step back here and take a note of this the summer games fest and the game awards similar price pointing the game awards <coughs> awarded final fantasy 7 remake or the Rebirth, whatever, whatever's the last title that came out, with the most anticipated title for 2024. The game comes out, and it failed all metrics to meet expectations. It sold like 2 million copies out of it. Uh, it dropped off in Japan. I've done videos on this, and the game is nowhere near what it was. The Game Awards, in a lot of ways, are just there to pat people on the back saying, you made a good game, here's an award, and then it doesn't translate to something more. The game doesn't do something more with it. Look at Baldur's Gate 3. Um, it wins all of these awards, 
but then did it translate to sales? Did it boost their sales a little bit? It boosted them probably a little bit, but nothing too crazy. It, these award shows, these ones included, you've seen this with the Oscars in a lot of ways, they just fall off. You're paying all this money. Who gets all this money? Where does that money actually go? There isn't really needing a marketing uh, aspect of it. Everyone knows this is coming up, so they showcase it on their own channels. They they sit there and they, they talk about it like we're doing here. For what? I really do feel like the Game Awards or the Game Fest didn't write home, didn't do anything spectacular in itself to be worth this money. It's a trailer. It goes out there. They make some money on the uh, YouTube side of things. Ultimately... I don't know. I, I This is just my thoughts on the matter. Anyway, I've been your proud Canadian Phoenix in a shadow. I'm signing off here. Have yourselves a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more opinions like this. Let me know down below. What Did you see something at the Games Fest that made you go, oh my God, I have to get that game because I saw absolutely nothing.